Frogaway here and it's time for another tutorial and today we are talking about the types of symbols that are used in Adobe Animate. Alright so I'm going to just load up Adobe Animate and we're going to go to Action Script 3, uh, fit to window and I'm going to show you the three different types of symbols that you can use in um, Animate and what their primary purpose is. Okay, so I'm going to start with a very simple one. We're just going to make a circle. And actually, we'll use a circle for everything. The first one, if I go convert to symbol, is a graphic. Okay, and the purpose of a graphic symbol, I'm going to call this graphic, is simply to be used uh, as a graphic element within your animation. Now, the cool thing about it, as we've looked at before, is that we can tween it very simply once we have it as a symbol. So if I create a classic tween, okay? With a graphic symbol, we can create a very simple animation, okay? It's a graphic symbol. It's, it's a static symbol. It doesn't change. It's going to be the same thing regardless of how we use it. It's just a single graphic, okay? So that is a graphic tween. Uh, sorry, sorry, that is a classic tween with a graphic symbol. Okay, next, let's look at a movie clip symbol. Now, a movie clip symbol is a little different. I'm going to make a new layer for it. And let's say we create a circle, same idea. This one I'll put as a different color. Oops. Uh, red. Okay. And we're going to make this a symbol, but this one will be a movie clip symbol. Okay. So we're going to call it movie. Now, a movie clip symbol is a symbol that changes over time. All right. And the way you can edit a movie clip symbol is by double clicking it, going into the editor and actually adding keyframes into the timeline. So let's say I just added one here. Let's say I want in keyframe two, I want that color to change to green. All right. So on frame one, it's red. On frame two, it's green. Okay. I have basically embedded a second frame within the movie clip symbol. If I go back out to my scene, it goes back to red because the first frame is red. But watch what happens when I create a tween. So I'm going to insert a keyframe at frame 24 and I'm going to move it over to here. And I'm going to test it. Watch what happens with, oops, I didn't put my tween in, sorry. I'm going to create a classic tween. It will move the exact same as a graphic symbol. But watch what happens when we create and retest it. That is switching from green to red very, very, very quickly. Because what it's doing is as it's tweening across, it is playing the movie that is within that symbol, which right now is two frames and it's going from red to green, red to green. Now, if you wanna watch my walk cycle tutorial, you'll see how we can embed much more complicated animations and frame by frame stuff within a movie clip symbol to create very complicated animations all right but the main difference is that in a movie clip symbol we can embed an animation within it all right so we can embed a different uh you know series of animations within that one symbol okay very cool stuff now for the last one I'm going to just make a new layer for that one. We're going to look at a button. And a button sounds pretty straightforward. But I'm going to explain exactly how it works within Flash. Uh, let's use the oval tool again. Let's set it to a color like yellow. And let's make a circle. These are all circles. And let's select that double click and convert to symbol. This time we're going to make a button symbol. I'm going to call it button. 
and hit OK. All right, we now have a button symbol. Now, what can we do with a button symbol? Let's double click it and let's see. Inside a button symbol, when we go into the editor, we see that we have these different options. Up, and I'm just looking down the timeline here. Up, over, down, and hit. What the heck are they trying to show us here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a keyframe into each one. I'm going to explain what each one does. So up is how the button looks when there is nothing touching it, meaning that our mouse is not over it. It's how the button's going to look by default. Over is how the mouse is going to look when our mouse goes over it. So let's change that color to something like mm, red. Down is what the button is going to look like when we click our mouse down on it. So let's say this is green. Hit is probably the one that most people will find the hardest to understand, uh, but it takes a little bit of experimenting. The hit zone, okay, you don't actually ever see this one, but the anything that is on hit is the area that the mouse has to touch in order for the button to become activated. Okay, so let me show you an example of the button now in use. We'll go back and we'll test this. Okay, so the button is yellow until I go over it, it becomes red. And when I click, it turns green. And the hit zone is telling it that it should only activate once I enter the circle, because that's what it had defined within that symbol. But watch what I can do. And you can do a lot of cool things with this. If I go into that symbol, and I go to my hit layer, and let's say I tell it, well, I, I want that to become activated anytime they put their mouse over any left part or left strip of the screen. I know it's kind of weird, but We'll see how it works in a second. So the hit can be any object, any fill, anything, because you never see it. It doesn't matter. We're going to go back to our scene. I'm going to test my movie. And now I can go over it. It's going to work the same, but watch this. When I go up here, it's also going to work. Anywhere along the place where that hit object was located, it's going to work. Okay, because the hit zone is telling it that it can be activated from anywhere. And we can put an object in the top right corner, any, anywhere we want on the stage, so that that button becomes activated. It's really cool because you can make objects on other parts of the screen interact with different parts of your stage. All right, so that is a cool way of doing it. Now, a button is useless unless it actually does something. So what you should watch is my interactivity tutorial to see how to add interactivity to the buttons so they actually can be manipulated by the user watching the video. Anyways, I hope this helps. Uh, it basically, like I said, covers where you should use each symbol. Okay, um, I use movie clip symbols all the time. Buttons, especially in my interactivity. Symbols, they're useful. And you should use them, but um, a movie clip will do just fine with a single frame. It'll act exactly as a graphic uh, symbol anyways. All right, hopefully you found that useful. Source files uh, for this one, there are none, but uh, I hope to see you guys using each type of symbol in your animations. Till next time, thanks for watching.